Welcome back. I'm Barry Craig. My guest today is Dr. J. Downs Siska, author to be. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Siska is Dr. Downs Siska. Or Dr. Siska, or, or Dr. Dr. J, or J. Well, or how about just J? Hey, you. <laughs> hey, you. Uh, is looking for photographs to go in his book on Lower Town. Tell us about the book. Well, uh, we are residents of the uh, of Lower Town right now. We rent. Let's begin first okay. by defining okay. what exactly is Lower Town. Lower Town is defined as from the river to 9th Street and from Jefferson to Park. That's Lower Town. Now, what's confusing to some folks that, that live here now is that there's been some redrawing of the lines over the last 25 years based on enterprise zones and economic development zones and historical zones and that sort of stuff. So the, 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 the boundaries have come in a ways on both sides. And, of course, the streets' names have been changed and a whole other street's been added since Lower Town started back in the 1850s. The whole area called Park, before that, there was a street before, th there wasn't Park, it was just, uh, was Martin Luther King, which used to be Clay and used to be Hospital, and I think used to be something even before that, which was the same thing they did with the names of the streets coming the other way. The numbers used to be uh, trees, mm -hmm. poplar and mm -hmm. oak and walnut mm -hmm. and all sorts, all, all the way up, and those were changed around. So, but that's the definition of Lower Town. And, and the book that we're doing, my wife and I, Shar Downs, is a picture book of Lower Town. Um, it's a picture book that has captions. We're very limited to the captions. Um, it's uh, produced by a national publishing company called Arcadia Publishing Company. And they did John Robertson's book. Two of John, John Robertson's. That's John's right. Books, yes. Arcadia Publishing Company, uh, a national firm that's, that's known for local history. And they have a, a number of series of books that they do. One of them is called Images of America. Professor Robertson did one on Paducah. Mm -hmm. Another one is called The Making of America. Mm -hmm. That's more history than picture, much more text than, than picture. And John Robertson did one on Paducah. Mm -hmm. There's another series called Black America. There's another series called Then and Now. And it's the then and now that my wife and I are working on. Um, and they had evidently approached Professor Robinson first to say, would you do this? And he had met me through just a uh, serendipitous event. Um, I was walking down the street. He was coming the other way with his wife. And we just struck up a conversation. It was, it was that simple. Two days later, we were at Global Nomad having coffee in Lower Town. He brought one of his books that him and his wife had written on one of the churches in, in downtown. Might have been first. Well, I don't know which one it was. And we just started talking about the houses in Lower Town and what he calls relic houses and um, with the stories behind them. And we were sitting in the Global Nomad at the time, which was pre-Civil War, two-story, big old Victorian yellow house. Well, when the family that bought the house now under the Artist Relocation Program, when they bought it to redo it, they took the inside walls out, they found letters from the Civil War time from husband to wife, wife to husband, talking about the dreary, rainy days of Paducah and how she missed him and all that sort of stuff. Amazing, amazing letters. Oh, yeah. And that sort of like really opened us up to more discussion about the other stories. And I even think there's TV shows behind these walls and stuff. Mm -hmm. No, if these walls could talk. Right, right. And so that's what we, we were sitting there talking about that. And we started talking about how many other places in Lower Town, especially Lower Town, were like that. Because if you look at the history of Lower Town, it started out as, actually it was called The Woods. It was very few houses referred to as The Woods. Um, but Maybe that's why they had the Tree Street name. It could be, exactly, it could be. That's a nice, I didn't even make that connection. Mm -hmm. It's a good connection. Um, where that was where the people that owned the businesses, that was where the shop managers and owners lived, in Lower Town, and they walked to downtown for their shops. Mm -hmm. Well, we were talking about this over coffee. Two days, no, a week later, I get an email from Arcadia Publishing Company saying, Professor Robinson recommends that we, that we give this a try. And I, I remember telling my wife to come over and look at the, can you read the screen here and tell me what you're seeing here? Because I'm not really believing what I'm reading because publishers don't come to authors. Um, and uh, she said, yeah, that's what it was. Well, we immediately thought Vanity Press. Nothing wrong with Vanity Presses, but we didn't have the money to buy a book right then because right. it's all going into the house. And... Uh, we, we, wrote, we wrote them back, and within a week, they had this package that they sent to us. First paragraph, italicized sentence, this is not a vanity press. It's a regular publishing company that specializes in local history. 
So we put together a proposal. Uh, um, and at that time, all about all we knew about Lower Town was the artist relocation program, because that's what, what brought us here. My wife's the artist. We're from the San Francisco Bay Area. We started writing about the artist relocation program. A week before the proposal is due, my next door neighbor, Ike Irwin, who used to be the secretary of the uh, Lower Town Neighborhood Association, gives me a box of files and says, oh, this is the association's files. You might find some interest there. And I looked at it like it was treasure. So I had the first document I picked up was a document um, written by uh, Dick Holland, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, who was, used to be involved in preservation in Lower Town, a company called Growth Incorporated. Right. There is a 10-year study, a review, of the Lower Town Neighborhood mm -hmm. Association from 1980 to 1990, and all that they did. And about the second page of this review, I called my wife over and I said, we have to rewrite the proposal. Because up until then, quite frankly, naive, um, uninformed, we thought the whole Lower Town thing was about the artist relocation program. That's not to slight the artist relocation program, that's to say this is a much bigger story than what we thought. Clearly, in 1980 to 1990, this neighborhood uh, association was extremely active. I mean, they were, they were pooling money together, buying houses to save them, rebuilding them, selling them again, taking that money, buying other houses. They were taking bus tours to cities all over the area that had sort of renovation area, uh, renovation cities or towns or neighborhoods. They put in the application to make, to request that it be a historic neighborhood on the National Register. These were very, very active people, very committed to what they were doing. And always bucking up against somebody because anytime you got one way of thinking going over here, there's going to be somebody else thinking this way over here. So, but it was a very exciting time. So that sort of opened our eyes. So, well, if this is going on here, and of course we were reading all the, all the books we could get our hands on about Paducah, and up comes the Civil War. Well, the whole battle of Paducah is fought in Lower Town. Mm -hmm. Not downtown, upper town, it's in Lower Town. And I went, oh, this is, this is great. What, what fodder for an entire chapter? So I read all the books, got my, got my maps together. Now I know where Fort Anderson is. I'm going down there. I'm going to have my wife take pictures. We got the, we got, you know, because and here's, my, here's the context. Um, we spent 20 years living in Hawaii. And uh, in Hawaii, uh, this is what I like to say, if King Kamehameha would sit, would have sat somewhere for a minute, that would be a tourist attraction today. Buses would stop, people would get out, take their pictures sitting there. So I'm thinking, okay, Battle of Paducah, won by the Union, big army comes in, tries to take it. We got to have monuments. We got to have a gift shop. We got to have stuff. I get in a bike and I go down and I get, <laughs> I get to the place and I'm looking around and I'm going, okay, it's 4th uh, and 3rd and uh, uh, Park and, uh, and I see this lawn. Just, just the lawn, big old beautiful lawn. Then there's the, uh, the flood wall. And then there's the executive inn and the, and the convention center. And, and I'm, I'm confused. And I remember somebody said, oh, a lot of times the monuments are sunk into the sidewalk. They have plaques and so I take, I got my bike again up and down the street, nothing. So across the street is a, a convalescent home. And I go in there, I figure maybe somebody knows. Well, wouldn't you know I run into a nice lady I knew in a class that I took, her name was Coleman. And she said, come here, honey, I'm going to show you where it is. And we walk out the door and she goes, there it is. I said, w where's the there? And she goes, that grass and that wall and that, that building, that's where Fort Anderson was. So I thought about that for a minute, and, and being an old history buff myself and having enough professors tell me history is written by the victor, maybe not this time. Maybe not this time. <laughs> <laughs> because where's the monuments? You know, where, where, I mean, men lost their lives here. This was, the, it was called the Battle of Paducah. Nothing. So that really, that really began to tweak my interest. Okay, there's more, much more here than what's, than what's being, um, than what, what we're reading about so far. I really wanted to get into it, but I had to continue to tell myself, and my, wa my wife continued to remind me, this is a picture book about, about Lower Town. Let's not write the great American novel. Let's not write the great American historical uh, treatise. This, this is a picture book. Let's collect pictures. Which sort of brought us to, our publisher told us, don't be writing no chapters yet. Don't be outlining chapters yet. Let the pictures tell you where to go. Mm -hmm. 
So we began with what we knew, the artists in Lower Town. We got their pictures, the then picture and the now picture, because all the artists down there took pictures of the houses they bought, which were really wrecks from the city, or the, or the city gave them that as part of them putting in two, three, or four hundred thousand dollars into the project to, to make them well again. So they had then and now shots. So those, those were easy. But we're new here. And how do you get to meet families that have been five and six generations here? by being introduced by someone that already knows you. and So that began a very slow process, kind of like the, the flywheel moving really slow at the beginning and starting to pick up the more and more people you know, uh, saw me. Uh, the more and more people saw me on television or the, new, the newspaper article about us or that sort of stuff began to add credibility to it. But in the beginning, I would take the letter from Arcadia Publishing and I'd hand that to I'd still be outside the door. I'd hand that to them. I'd give them my business card and I'd give them my brand new Kentucky driver's license and then say, it's real, I, I really am doing this, I'm not some you know, slasher walking down the street trying to get into your house, and they would let me in. The other process that I involve myself is I bring my scanner and my computer with me. Because what I'm asking for are heirloom family treasures that probably haven't been looked at in decades old dusty scrapbooks way back with grandma and great grandma and uncle and old wild uncle Harry all in a scrapbook someplace having them bring those out and literally see pages fall apart in my hands right around the photograph just that old of stuff they're sharing that with me it's coming to the air for the first time in you know how many years and so they don't want that out of the house Right. They don't want me to, thank you, I'll be back in two weeks, you don't know who I am, but mm -hmm. you know, trust me, mm -hmm. trust me with this. Mm -hmm. So I, I bring everything there, that makes it okay, kind of, sort of. But they still want to make sure that you know, all the pictures I got, and I can understand that. Mm -hmm. But what's going on is, is that the stories behind these pictures, oh, yeah, there's plenty of photos of the flood. Both flood, the ones, the 1913 I got some shots, plenty of 1937s. But there's new fi pictures that have come to light now because these are those family photographs. You know, Uncle Harry in the boat going down the river, going down the river, yeah, go, going down 4th Street, taking pictures during the flood is not the guy that's taking the shots for the National Geographic that made it in all the newspapers. This is Uncle Harry going on his boat and taking shots. Now, speaking of the National yeah. Geographic and yeah. the flood, of course, that brings the, the famous cow on the porch. Yes. Where exactly is that house and is it still standing? Okay, yes, it is still standing. It is in Lower Town. Um, I believe it is on, um, oh geez, I don't remember the address, but it is in Lower Town. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very unique looking house because it does have that second porch up top. And there will be a cow on that porch because the folks that bought the house, um, he's the, um, he was a chef in the Queen Mary. So there's going to be a cafe and his wife does jewelry. And so, but they're going to bring the house back to its original splendor and they're going to have a cafe and they're going to have sort of a museum inside about the stranded cow and about the flood in 37. And what's interesting is right now we've got the barbecue on the river going on. Mm -hmm. Well, the guys from the, the good guys, I think they're called, or the barbecue guys or something, came to these, these people, the Heberts, uh, Bernie and Grace Hebert, and said, can we borrow the facade of your house to use as the facade for our... Our, our cookout place. And she said, well, well, sure, that'd be fine. Well, they got a cow. She painted it. I even think that made the news about a week ago when she was painting the cow. But that cow is, they got a cow up on a facade at the, uh, at the barbecue on the river this weekend. But, but when the cafe is finished, they're going to have a, a, that cow a, a, is going a stuffed to that, cow up there. Yeah, or, that, the or cow that you see now, yeah. the, the plastic one, <laughs> is going to go up <laughs> on the porch. That's a wonderful and a, a photo opportunity. Oh, it will. Oh, it, it's, it will. It, because, it is. Because that photo went... Nationwide and perhaps worldwide. That's right. The, the most and there's like two or three photo. shots about about the about the cow. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. 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 So that so we have so and that was another thing that began to sort of open up things is well what other stories are here? You know, what else is going on down here that, that maybe has been lost to antiquity? Tell us about some of those stories. Well, there's one I'm working on right now that just by happenstance I stumbled across through different interviews. Um, the name Harry Lukofsky comes up. Never heard the guy's name. All I knew was that he played violin professionally. So I went on Google and I typed in Harry Lukofsky. 
and up comes the, the screen, and the music begins. This is a man who did an album, the only album of its kind ever done, Violin Bebop. He's played with Count Basie, with, with Ella Fitzgerald, with Quincy Jones. Um, he, was, he played in the NBC Orchestra. But what he's, this amazing album, created, he's, he's famous in the jazz world. Um, I know his grandmother lived in Paducah. The question is, was it Lower Town? How do you find out? Where do you go? So on the website, there was a connection to order an album. So, and, the, and the connection was basically to his wife to order the album. So I, instead of ordering the album, I said, is, do you know anything about Harry Lukofsky? Can you help me? I got nothing. Meanwhile, I'm talking to other people in other interviews about this incredible thing I've uncovered, this story, which I'm, I'm figuring everybody knows about and nobody does. And someone else says, oh, I heard about of a Lukowski, lives in Mayfield. Somebody else said, no, wait a minute, his, there's a niece, nephew right here in Paducah. So I find her. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, yes, and she's got a brother. He lives in Mayfield, and here's the bonus. Mrs. Lukowski, Sherry, is still alive. Wow. In Connecticut. Evidently, he married very, her very young. I mean, she was very young when he married her. Right. She's still alive. I got her email address. I wrote off to her. As a matter of fact, last night. And she wrote me right back. And she hadn't gotten the first email. She doesn't remember. She remembers uh, where he lived. She remembers him taking her down to the river, him taking her through, through what she thought was downtown. But she really wasn't sure. She asked me to give her more names of, of streets and schools. So I gave her St. Mary's because St. Mary's was down there. I gave her Jefferson School because Jefferson School used to be there, but it's no more. I gave her the names of the streets on both sides. And I told her, if you can remember any of those names of streets, I could nail it down whether it was Lower Town or not. And that's been the discovery. And the excitement about this is that people who didn't even make this connection before didn't even realize that Harry was this famous violinist. And here's a bonus to this. His son, they're living in New York. They got a record shop. His son starts a band called The Left Bank. Their big album is Walk Away Renee. But what's more interesting to me as, as a historian in his piece is they create a whole new music movement called Baroque Rock. They dress up in Victorian. And I'm thinking they're from England. This is a guy from Brooklyn. And his dad's from Paducah. And, but it's Harry Lukowski who does all the string arrangements for the band. Harry Lukowski. That's an amazing story. Uh, I grew up with Joe Ross Lukowski, <laughs> who is your source, Fran Johnson. Yes. She was Fran Lukowski. Fran's dad was Louis, and Joe's dad was David. And I, <laughs> I've known Joe Ross all of my life, and I've never heard the story of Harry Lukowski. That is absolutely fascinating. To me, it's, it, it's those are the kind of things. Another here's another example. I'm I'm at uh, the Barclay Museum, and um, uh, doing some research there, and um, Jim Jim Crouch tells me about the Betsy Ross of Paducah. Turns out that Sarah Smith Campbell, back in uh, the 40s, um, designed the the flag of the city of Paducah. But here's what's interesting about this, even beyond this. She lived where the Greyhound bus station used to be mm -hmm. in that area. Mm -hmm. Well, now let's backtrack and talk about someone else famous in Paducah lore and a lower, original Lower Town resident, Quintus Quigley. Yes, Quintus Quintana Quigley. What a wonderful there you name. Are. Q, 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 Yeah, you can't it's beat like that. It's like a rock station or Absolutely. something. Absolutely, yeah. it is. Uh, he turns out to be, he comes to Paducah and moves into Lower Town, builds a log cabin, basically. Um, there's a, a great book that his ancestors have put together mm -hmm. about his writings. Mm -hmm. He wanted to give his family, his children, a legacy. So what he did is he just wrote a daily journal. It, was, it turned out not to be daily, but it was big enough to where I think these are like the, the great nephews or great nieces um, have taken almost 16 years to put this book together. But in the book, uh, he talks about Lower Town moving in, into the, and his wife talked about mo moving into Lower Town. He's the one that fills out the paperwork to have Paducah become a city. He becomes the first city attorney. 
along, along with being other uh, uh, political types and a uh, law firm and everything else. But where is his house? It's described as the same place where now it is the Greyhound bus station. So we have the founder of the, the writer of the, the city documents in the same location as the woman who did the flag a hundred years later in the same place. Yeah. So the, the, the example of, of sort of watching how things begin to, to fall on top of each other, how things are related is what, this, what the excitement is about. I was, uh, an another example, Captain Iger. The man was a hero during the flood. Mm -hmm. Turned out that um, during the, uh, this is, uh, Captain Iger owned a towing business. Mm -hmm. uh, now I believe it's, it's ascended down to Bill and Mary Dyer. Mm -hmm. uh, they have Tennessee Valley, Tennessee Valley Towing. Well, I went to their place, and this is, this is an example of the kind of research and the giving uh, that, I, that I have had experiences with. Go over to her house, make my introductions. I've met her through her sister. Um, through another person, and it was sort of been cleared you know, to come to the house. She brings me down, walks me down to the cellar, and says, four boxes. Don't know what's in them anymore. Go right ahead. It was like each, each one was an album of, 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 of another part of the story, but what came out of it was Captain Iger. During the flood, because he had a towing business, he had, t he had barges. He gave some of the barges to save cars. He gave some of the barges to the police, some of the barges to the fire department to put out fires to, to keep some order. Um, he bought out an entire railroad car full of chickens and just gave them to the hospitals. He bought out two grocery stores and just gave the food to the people that needed it at the hospitals and at the centers. Um, and one of the photos that we discovered from Mary and Bill Dyer's collection is a big wide shot of downtown Lower Town where the captain lived. And there, between his house and another house, is sticking out a barge with four cars on it. Right around the corner is a car that's almost covered over to the top in water, but there's the barge sticking right out from his house. And a note written on, an, on, on the photograph, here's our house. So it was, it was one of those kind of nice, we found something for this. We also got the picture of, of, of Emma, Emma Eigert, who was the wife of Captain Eigert, who uh, many people know the family say they worked very closely together and one needed the other and they worked very strongly together. It was nice that we could finally get a picture of Emma into a book to show her contribution to this event. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it was a nice, and there it was, in, in, a, in a folder, in a, in a, in a box, but this, this wonderful photograph that had this story behind it. And, and that's sort of like the sort of double uh, curse of this kind of research is it's one thing to do historical research. You're gathering your data, you're, you're triangulating data, you're trying to get information from three or four different places to make sure that the data is accurate before you actually produce it. This is a whole different kind of thing because what we're talking about here is family history. This is very personal. This is, it's very difficult to abstract this. It's, it's, like trying to, it's like writing about a battle versus writing about one person's struggle in the battle. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. So finding those images that, are, that will tell a story almost by themselves and then having a historical background to that image placed together with that picture makes it, makes it a very powerful image. Now, we're sort of committed to doing that that way uh, trying to tell the whole story of Lower Town because, as I said in, a, in an article once, it's like peeling an onion. We're new here, so we ask the naive questions. We ask the questions everybody else assumes everybody knows because we don't know, so we ask the questions. Well, we're always discovering something new about Paducah, something new about Lower Town. It's an amazing place. The Battle of Paducah, the river industry, the, the Civil War itself, the houses that are down there, the industry that was down there, the business, they invented ni the nylon hose, uh, uh, the seamless nylon hose was invented here, along with dipping dots. I mean, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the guy that invented the bolt action rifle was here in Paducah. Um, there's a number of these sort of events that, that happened that, that, that one of the frustrating parts to me is we are limited to the geographical location. We can't write about Paducah because Professor Robinson did a fine job with two books on that. This is just Lower Town. So I can't tell you how many times I was in someone's house with some great photographs, like the thing about the guy with the bolt action guns and these other things and finding out there are 
two blocks outside of lower town. Right. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Yeah. Can't do that. Could, I mean, just it, it wouldn't be honest. It wouldn't be honest mm -hmm. to the piece. Mm -hmm. But those are the kind of interesting parts of it. The other thing is how things change. Where the Marine Hospital, where it sat, and then maybe before or after, we're not sure yet. I got to read some more and got to talk to you some more. That Fort Anderson was put around it to protect the hospital, or the other way around. Not sure, but the building itself starts out as the Marine Hospital, then becomes. Riverside Hospital, right. then becomes Lord's Hospital, mm -hmm. then Lord's moves. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. St. Mary's. St. Mary's for 106 years is in Lower Town, mm -hmm. starting in mid-1800s. Biggest school in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the city, most kids, most population in the city. Changes, we go, we go, through, we go through changes in, in, in populations. They put five schools together, now we have St. Mary Academy. St. Mary's school system, excuse mm -hmm, me, mm -hmm. sorry, St. Mary's school system, and it now has five different schools together, and now what's happening, they're growing again. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, things change, things stay mm -hmm. the same. We have one minute left. Tell us how you can be reached if someone oh, would boy. like to loan Thank a you. photo to you. Thank you, and let me, let me promise, let me go right to the camera, let me promise you this, I will come to your house and bring my scanner and bring my computer so your pictures never leave Never leave your house. You can call me at uh, 443-0895, area code 270. So 270-443-0895. Or you can send me an email, jdsiska at mac.com, mac.com. Either way, you can get me, and I would love to talk to you. If you don't have any photographs, but you got stories, I want to hear the stories, because they always lead me to another photograph. Thank you. Thank you very much. My guest today was Dr. J. Down Siska. I'm Barry Craig. We will see you next time.